Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be diving into the deep, deep depths of protein moisture balance. I will admit I have been putting this video off for a very long time because it is such a big subject and I just wanted to make sure that I was going to give you guys a comprehensive video that covers everything. So hopefully this video is going to do just that. The protein moisture balance is probably one of the biggest mysteries of the curly hair community. It's one of my most asked questions. How do I know if my hair needs protein? How do I give my hair protein? Etc. Etc. So first I thought it would be helpful to talk a little bit about my hair and how it loves protein and how I came to figure out that it loves protein. So when I first started looking after my curls, I used a lot of moisturizing products. I deep conditioned my hair every week. I didn't really pay attention to the ingredients in my products because I didn't know that was a thing. And I was a little bit scared of protein. I'd heard that protein overload can wreck your hair. It can make it feel really dry. And I didn't want that to happen to my hair. My hair was very soft. It was limp. It wasn't holding a curl. And I thought, you know what? It's showing all the signs of needing protein. So I just did a gelatin treatment. That is how I first introduced protein into my routine. And I noticed such a difference. And ever since then, I realized that my hair loves protein. And I tried to incorporate it into every single wash day through the products that I use, or every so often I will do a protein treatment, which I will touch upon a little bit later in the video. So what is protein. Protein helps strengthen our hair, adds structure or stiffness to our hair. It also adds shine and helps keep our hair hydrated. And it does this by filling in the gaps in the hair's cuticle, which temporarily helps repair damage and lock the moisture in. So how do you tell if your hair needs protein? Well, firstly, as a general rule of thumb, fine and medium hair types will need more protein than coarse hair. And this is because protein gives fine and medium hair a level of stiffness and support that is very much needed for hair types like mine. So I have loose curly hair and it needs the extra support from protein to help hold the curl in place. However, coarse hair doesn't really need the extra support. So using too much protein on coarse hair can cause it to feel dry, brittle and tangly. So as well as fine and medium hair types, damaged hair, color treated hair or highly porous hair, so high porosity hair is generally more likely to need more protein. And it is not true that low porosity hair does not need protein. With lower porosity hair, you'll find that it probably needs smaller proteins that can penetrate the hair more easily. And I'll touch on that a little bit later on. So some general signs that your hair may need protein are your hair struggles to hold a curl, so your curls fall out very easily. You have minimal elasticity, so you pull your curls and they don't bounce back. Your hair feels overly soft. It kind of has like a mushy feeling, kind of has like no substance to it and your hair may not behave as normal even though you've tried everything. So when someone describes their hair as over moisturized, these are typically the symptoms that they are describing. And this is usually from using too much moisture and not enough protein. So you're off balance. So how do you identify protein in your hair products? Some common terms to look out for are the words hydrolyzed, amino acids, peptides, collagen, keratin, silk, oat, wheat, soy, corn, and quinoa all the vegetables. But just because you've identified protein in an ingredient list, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is high in protein. Generally, product ingredients lists are listed in order of concentration. So the first ingredient will be like the most highly concentrated. And the first ingredient is usually water or aqua. So if protein appears in the first five or six ingredients, then it's probably a higher protein product. And if a protein appears nearer to the bottom of an ingredients list, while it does contain protein, it's not necessarily a high protein product and not necessarily a product that you would opt for if your hair is in need of protein. How to give your hair protein. I get so many questions about, okay, well, I, do I use it in my shampoo? Do I put it in my conditioner? Like what products do I need to use to give my hair protein? So the number Number one way that you can give your hair protein is in the products that you use. So this could be your shampoo, your conditioner, or your styling products. Take a look at the products that you have on your shelf and see if you can notice any of the ingredients that I mentioned previously in your product ingredients list and take a note of whereabouts in the ingredients list they are and then you'll be able to determine whether it's a high protein product, low protein product, or whether it doesn't contain 
any protein. The second way that you can introduce protein into your routine is with a protein treatment. So if you've been using products that contain protein and after a few washes, you're still not getting the results that you want, your hair still is a little bit overly soft, it's lacking definition and the curls are falling out, then I would recommend doing a protein treatment. So protein treatments will contain a higher concentration of protein than just using your products. So that's why I'd say try the products first and then do a protein treatment if it's not working out for you. So some different types of protein treatments include a DIY gelatin treatment, which is my personal favorite. I get the best results with this. You may also want to try the Apogee two-step treatment. There's another one called Botanica the Menda. And for people who are looking for a vegetarian or a vegan option, then you could try a rice water rinse or a beer rinse, which contains proteins from the yeast and the grains. Something that I do also want to mention is that a deep conditioning treatment is not a protein treatment just because it contains protein. So I get a lot of messages from people saying, I've done a protein treatment and it's still not working. My hair's still really, really soft and it's, it's still not curling up well. But what they've actually done is a deep conditioning treatment that contains protein. So the reason that it's not gonna give your hair the protein boost that it probably needs is because it contains a lot of moisturizing products. So if your hair is very, very over moisturized already and it needs protein, then using a moisturizing product like a deep conditioner is not gonna help. It's gonna send you even further into over moisturization. Is that a word? It is now. Something else that I hear a lot is, I tried protein and my hair hated it, or it didn't do anything for my hair. And what I say to that is, if your hair is really over moisturized or is very much in need of protein, then just using protein on one wash day probably isn't gonna have the effect that you want it to because it might take a few washes to get your hair back to be balanced. So if you've been using moisture, 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 it's gonna be like highly over moisturized and need protein. So it's gonna take a few washes to get it back to balance. And also your hair might have just not liked the product that you use. You might have used a product that contains protein and it just didn't like that product. It didn't agree with some of the ingredients in that product. Another thing is that it might just be the type of protein that you use that your hair might not like. There are a few different types of protein and the type that suits your hair best will depend on various factors, including your hair type and how well that protein can bond to your hair. So here's a look at some of the different types of proteins and which hair types they are generally best suited to. So first you've got your amino acids and peptides, which are the smallest types of protein. They're good for most hair types, including low porosity hair. Then we have hydrolyzed silk, keratin, and collagen, which are smaller proteins again, and they're good for most hair types. Then we have gelatin, which is partly hydrolyzed collagen. So that's a medium sized protein. It's good for high porosity hair, damaged and brittle hair, or fine and medium hair. And then we have things like hydrolyzed wheat, oat, quinoa, corn, and soy proteins, which are medium to large proteins. They're best for high porosity hair, fine and medium hair, damaged hair, and chemically treated hair. As a general rule of thumb, if you have low porosity hair, you want to go for smaller proteins. And if you have high porosity hair, you want to go for the medium to large ones. If you are noticing that you're using a protein product and it's not working out for you, maybe just take note of the different types of protein and try a different one and see if that works. So now that you know all about protein, let's talk about moisture. So what is moisture. In a nutshell, moisture is water. So to moisturize our hair, we need to give it water. However, when we say our hair is moisturized, we are usually referring to it feeling soft and smooth. And when we say the products we use are moisturizing, we mean they make our hair feel soft and they help our hair retain moisture. At least that is how I understand it. So to achieve moisturized hair, meaning getting water into your hair and keeping it there, there are certain ingredients that can help and these include humectants, which attract moisture into the hair and emollients, which seal the moisture in. Humectants include aloe vera, glycerin, honey, panthenol, propylene glycol and hydrolyzed proteins. And emollients include oils, butters like shea butter and fatty alcohols like acetyl alcohol. 
At least I think that's how we say it. How to tell if your hair needs moisture. So as I've mentioned in my other videos, curly hair is naturally more dry than straight hair. And that is just because the natural oils can't glide through the hair as easily. And if you're just starting out looking after your curls, then the chances are your hair will need moisture rather than protein. And this is usually because you've not been giving it the moisture that it needs, or maybe you've been using heat styling products, or maybe you've been color treating it. Generally, coarse hair will also need more added moisture than fine and medium hair types because coarse hair is naturally drier. Some general signs that your hair may need moisture is if it feels dry and brittle, if it breaks easily, it gets very tangled and if it's very frizzy. So how do you give your hair moisture when it needs moisture? So luckily most curly hair products are designed to do just that which is why lots of us end up over moisturizing our hair after using these kind of products for a while. So the kind of products to use when your hair needs moisture are conditioners, so your regular conditioner, leave-in conditioner, deep conditioner, curl creams, and water. Dry hair is thirsty hair, so using things like the squish to condition method and applying products to soak in wet hair will really help get the moisture into your hair, and then your products will help lock the moisture in. How do you figure out what your hair likes, whether it likes protein, whether it likes moisture, what it needs on a particular day? Now, I can't really help you with that, but what I can offer is some advice. The best way to figure out whether your hair likes protein, for example, is to use products that contain protein. Pay attention to your hair and how your hair responds. If your hair feels bouncier, more defined, and it holds a curl more, then the chances are that it likes protein. So you should continue using protein. And if you use moisturizing products and you find that your hair is much softer, feels more hydrated, then you should use more moisturizing products. So one way to figure out whether your hair responds better to protein or moisture is something that I saw Curly Green Eyes mention on Instagram, and that is to do one wash day with all protein products and one wash day with no protein products, so all moisturizing products, and see how your hair responds. If your hair is much better on the protein wash day, then your hair probably likes and needs protein, and if it's better on the moisturizing wash day, then your hair probably needs and likes moisture. So it really is about experimenting to find out what your specific hair needs and likes on that particular day. Because the whole thing with this is, is a constant never ending thing that you have to figure out. And that takes me on nicely to the next section, maintaining a balance. We hear so much about the protein moisture balance, but what does it actually mean? Sciencey Hair Blog describes it as a balance between stiffness and softness. So you get your stiffness from the protein and you get your softness from the moisture. And it's about maintaining those two things to give you the best hair you can get. If you use too much moisture in your hair, so you deep condition every wash day, you use only moisturizing products and no protein, it's going to send you off balance. So you need to bring it back up by maybe you'll do a protein treatment or maybe you'll do a protein wash day with protein products and that will kind of bring you back up to balance, so it's a scale, it's a balance, and it needs to be maintained. One way some people combat that is by using, so for instance, if you've got hair like mine, using protein in every wash day. Other people may choose to use moisturizing products, but they balance it out by doing a protein treatment every other week or something like that. But it really is about deciding what your hair needs and just like everything that comes with curly hair care, your hair is unique and what your hair needs and what your hair responds well to is gonna be completely different to what my hair needs and what my hair responds well to. So let's talk a little bit about moisture overload. So from my experience, it's very easy to over moisturize your hair. This is because all curly hair products are pretty much designed to add moisture to the hair. We always condition our hair because we have to detangle our hair. It's especially easy to over moisturize your hair once it becomes healthy from my experience and also if your hair is naturally fine or medium in texture and if it's very soft naturally as well. So here is a picture of my hair when it is over moisturized. So as you can see it's lacking bounce, it's lacking definition, it's very stretched out, the curls didn't hold in place and it felt very soft. So this happens to my hair more often than not. My hair is very easily over moisturized and that is why I know my hair loves protein. So 
In this picture, to get my hair back to a balance, I would do a gelatin treatment and then I would also follow up with protein containing products. So I would style my hair with maybe a moisturizing product, so a cream, maybe one that doesn't contain protein, maybe one that does if it's really over moisturized. And then I would use a gel over the top that does contain protein. And I may have to do that a couple of times to rebalance my hair, but it will depend on your hair type. And then with protein overload, there's only one occasion that I can remember that I think I may have had protein overload and that is here when I was on holiday in Barcelona and the only styling product that I had with me was a high protein product and I just kept putting more and more over my hair because I was refreshing with that product and I just remember my hair being very frizzy and feeling kind of stiff and it was felt very dry as well it was weird for my hair because my hair is not usually like that I thought it was something to do with the water at the time that I was refreshing with, but in hindsight, it was definitely the gel because I was putting a high protein product over and over and over on my hair. And then when I washed my hair, it was fine. It didn't feel dry anymore. So yeah, this is the only example of protein overload that I have in my hair. And to fix that, to reverse that, to restore the balance, you will need to add moisture into your hair. So you might wanna do a deep conditioning treatment, use moisturizing products, but essentially, Everyone's hair is different and everyone's hair will need a different amount of protein and moisture and it's up to you to experiment with the advice throughout this video and other research that you do to decide what works best for your hair. I was going to do a Q&A at the end of this video but it's already very long and I'm aware that it's probably information overload so I'm going to do a Q&A in another video so if you've watched the video and you have any more burning questions feel free to leave them in the comments below. So yes, that is it. Protein moisture your balance 101 i really 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 hope you found this video helpful i really hope that i explained protein moisture balance okay it's such an in-depth topic and i really wanted it to be broken down for you and i wanted it to be really easy to understand because yeah it can be hard obviously i am not a product formulator and i'm definitely not a scientist so everything that i have mentioned in this video i've learned through research and also just experimenting with my own hair and a massive shout out as well to sciencey hair blog who helped me understand protein moisture balance in more depth as well as like a lot of other science-based hair stuff as well so definitely check the blog out if you're interested in science and hair and I'll put a link in the description bar below but yes that is the end of the video I really hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to give it a like leave a comment and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I will see you soon bye guys